record button and um, yeah, go for it, James. Perfect. Okay, I'll get my uh, screen share up. Um, can you hear me okay? That's wonderful. Yep, um, so for the benefit of uh, the recording, um, I'm James, my name is James Hulse, uh, much like Greta, data scientist with the Leeds Institute of Data Analytics. Uh, I've been working on the Open Info project since the end of, uh, beginning of April now. Um, I spent the first few weeks getting to grips with the project and the data structure of um, open street maps uh, specifically sort of catching up to uh, all of the work that Greta had been doing um, so I suppose we can just really hit the ground running with some of the outputs we've generated since then obviously um, Greta had created a vignette tutorial documenting how to um, access and use OSM data um using the in r using the osm extract package um uh, on the screen now uh, hopefully you should have been able to see that already uh, we've been able to um update this and implement a similar tutorial that documents how to download and analyze some basic open street map data using uh, a couple new packages uh, specifically for python um, that is the OSM NX and PyROSM package. Uh, in this vignette, it's uh, pretty much almost complete. It's still a slight work in progress. Uh, I've done the, more or less the whole workflow of downloading, acquiring data from OSM, visualizing the data and saving the data uh, using the PyROSM package. I'm looking to implement um, a little guide at the bottom, also covering it in a separate package. Um, it's always better to have multiple options than one uh, and you use the package which which is most suitable for you um so we've been able to create this this documentation using it in python um additionally there was uh, a need to um sort of go through the same documentation using a graphical user interface um so we've also created a tutorial documentation on how you can um download OpenStreetMaps data using a plugin for QGIS. Um, so this documentation here just goes through the installing of the plugin, how you can find a specific area. Here we use the Institute of Transport Studies in Leeds, uh, specify a bounding box, and then you can download the data to your system. Uh, this data can then be analyzed using the um, OSM NX package uh, and there is a tutorial docu um, there is going to be a tutorial on, on reading uh, data downloaded from QGIS into the OSM NX uh, package. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Additionally, um, we've started working uh, on creating the open infra package. Uh, now the open infra package um, is going to host a couple of the some, some of the functions that we make uh, that um, some of the functions we, we've created that can recategorize or repass OSM data to a more user friendly um, more user friendly interface essentially and, and hopefully that can actually better act as evidence in supporting policy decisions or infrastructure upgrades as you know OpenStreetMaps data itself can be incredibly messy um and a whole host whole host of tags um obviously as discussed by robin earlier the main uh, goal of this is using our functions and uh, data passing and recategorization functions we're going to be creating transport data packs um for well the idea being every transport authority within england um as much uh, as Robin has mentioned, we've we've been doing a lot of the preparation for scaling up. So once we've developed uh, the full function, full suite, seat, full suite of functions to create a data pack, uh, it should then, fingers crossed, be relatively easy to uh, um, just upload data um, based on bounding polygons for each specific transport authority. 
uh, apply the parsing done by the open infra package uh, and that should then you're left with ho hopefully um, a, a useful transport data pack. So, so far we've been able to get a clean max speed function and a recode road class function. Uh, I'm going to just do a very quick brief demonstration uh, as to what these functions do and how they hopefully uh, make the OpenStreetMaps data a little bit more accessible and easily visible. Um, <clears throat> Go down here. So this is this is the um, recode road class function. This function um, has it does parsing based on um, a paper conducted by uh, Chan and Cooper. Um, who they are essentially looking to reclassify um, OpenStreetMap roads. Um, their specific uh, reason was to try and um, approximate road traffic flows, um, such that they could use these approximated road traffic flows in their cycle routing algorithms. Uh, the motivation for this was in order to generate road traffic motor flows, um, just because of the distance that cars travel, you need a much larger radius than you would for modeling a cycling flow. And it was uh, incredibly computationally expensive. Now in doing this, um, Chan and Cooper defined, redefined um, uh, several different road classifications or descriptions as are listed within this table here. Motorways, non-residential and residential George carriageways, primary roads, secondary roads, tertiary roads and local roads. Now this is an extension to the four road types specified by the uh, current highways guides. Um, unfortunately I should have had a link up for that ready. Uh, unfortunately I didn't. Um, the, 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 the differentiation from the official highways guide is the splitting, I believe, of non-residential dual carriageways, residential dual carriageways and primary roads. Um, this was due to the fact that um, within, within the highways guide, there was no differentiation between a residential and non-residential dual carriageway, uh, whereas in, this is in fact the case. Um, if you're on a residential, residentially fronted dual carriageway, typically the maximum speed allowed will be around 40 miles an hour, uh, which varies greatly to the dual carriage, standard dual carriageway of uh, 70 miles an hour. Um, and so, yeah, this 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 function can actually specify the difference between uh, what hopefully we look to add the functionality to differentiate between um, a residential and non-residential dual carriageway as well. Currently, it can't split. Um, but I'm looking to implement that over the coming days by combining um, maximum speed allowed and being once we know the maximum speed allowed for a dual carriageway, we can infer if it's residentially fronted or not, hopefully. Um, I'll be updating on that as well. Uh, so an example here, just downloading uh, some data for the city of Leeds here and then setting up a five kilometre circular buffer because we don't want to plot for the whole data. It, it becomes quite messy um, and a little bit confusing. So this is a five kilometre um, radius around Leeds city centre. Uh, this is just using the default highway values stored in OSM. As can be seen, uh, there's quite a lot here and it's quite messy. You can't really understand what's going on. You've got to really quite go in, um, really go in five and find out. And it's just not really, you can't get a high level overview uh, very quickly. Now passing this same data through our OSM um, road road description reclassifier. Uh, we get the roads uh, output as one of the seven categories defined by Channel, Clu uh, Channel Cooper. We have primary roads, secondary roads, tertiary roads, motorways. Uh, as I mentioned before, unfortunately, we've not been able to separate the residential and non-residential dual carriageways so far, uh, but that's something I'm looking to implement. And then finally, something Channing Cooper called traffic free roads, but this is just cycleways. So these are included in here as well. Um, what I'm looking to be able to do, uh, update this a little bit more, is to have uh, as an interactive map um, so that you can um, select specific line strings at once um, so you can get a bit of a clearer image um, of, of, your, of your area. Now, for the purpose of demonstration, we've selected a five kilometre radius circle. Um, in the transport data packs, we're hoping will be generating um, using the open infra package and these functions. Um, the entire uh, uh, infrastructure network will be the size of the transport authority uh, that we provide to the function. 
I've only limited this to five kilometers so uh, that we can just have a nice visualization today. So moving on, we come to the um, second function that we've worked so far. So that was the recode road class. We've now got um, clean max speed. Now um, within OSM data, um, the max speed column is not always um, nicely formatted. Um, <clears throat> A number of mappers will just say enter 50 for a 50 miles per hour speed limit. Others will specify the units as miles per hour. Others will maybe just put 50 full stop or dot 50. Um, what this function does is essentially goes through the max speed column for OpenStreetMap infrastructure elements and repasses the max speed. So you just get all the max speeds in a nice, nice similar format. Uh, and again, we visualise these for a five kilometre uh, radius around Leeds city centre. Now, as can be seen, there are a lot less ways included within this um, this 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 plot than the uh, road descriptions above. This is down to just the fact where if there is missing, if there is no data that is um, input by matter, mappers on maximum speeds for features, um, then uh, th th that doesn't get caught by our um, it doesn't get repassed because there's no speed that's been entered at all. Um, something I am uh, looking at doing and have thought of um, over the last few days is <clears throat> trying to um, using road descriptions uh, generated from OSM highway tags, um, knowing typical speed restrictions on these types of roads. Uh, I'm looking to maybe add a sort of an implied cleaned max speed. Um, very much uh, definitely not not adding it as is because um, it's important that it's noted that the data is implied um, and yeah um, that you should really need to understand how to do it now these are the two functions that we have working currently uh, within the open infra package um, just before Greta finished working on this project before April uh, Greta had developed an inclusive mobility function um, which takes um, it takes uh, it analyzes OSM infrastructure and using the tags or data provided, such as say, um, is there a flush curb on this sidewalk? Uh, what is the width of this sidewalk? Uh, is there tactile paving here? Um, it uh, recategorizes OSM data, and for each category, will either output yes, no, or maybe. Uh, is, is, is typically. Um, there are other instances, knock, um, such as say, for example, um, is uh, this pavement service even or uneven? Um, and all of these decisions are based on the inclusive mobility guide. Um, now, this is a function generated by Greta. It's currently listed on the Open Infra website. Uh, I'm very near to implementing this function as um, implementing this function with the open infra package um, and then that that will also be updated into the references and there will be examples working on there um, something about the uh, inclusive mobility guide is it, it generates an additional about um, 10 to 11 columns of data to go into the transport infrastructure data packs now some of these um, are maybe not 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 as uh, as as um, useful in terms, some of these fields may not be as useful as others. Um, and so I'm, I'm currently in the work of um, essentially categorizing all these down, listing them, and then basically we need, we'll go through discussion and see which, which, um, which features would like to be included or would be useful to be included and um, which ones wouldn't. Now, additionally, I'm also working on uh, a new function now, which, um, <coughs> pardon me, uh, will add two additional columns. Uh, okay, before I talk anymore, I'll just do a quick. quick. Here we have um, a, uh, a quick visualization of the current transport data pack we have. Now. The transport data pack contains um, the OSM feature ID. This is a unique ID for each feature type, uh, of which if you know, you can go and actually view the feature in OSM. 
uh, and see how people have drawn the data uh, equally if the feature has been labeled incorrectly. Uh, you can then go into OSM and correct it yourself. Uh, so say, for example, here we see a residential local road. That's uh, the output of the uh, road reclassification algorithm has found this unclassified road looking at a number of other tags not included within this data pack. It's been able to determine that this road is a residential or local road and it's included the OSM ID. Now, as mentioned, you can go and find the OSM IDs. So if I just put the OSM ID up here along with uh, a way, it's actually brought up the way here in Leeds LS12 to EL. It's a very small one, but it's Armley Road. So Armley Road, as can be seen, is a small uh, residential one just going under, uh, not on the main road of Canal Street underneath. And the road uh, description has been able to identify that. As mentioned as well, if max speeds aren't entered into the OSM data, our um, clean max speed column here, which is the output of our uh, recode max speed column, there was no data entered and so it's not been able to pass what the uh, correct speed limit for for this road would be uh, under here though we can see uh, these 20 30s and 40s have been recategorized to miles per hour so these are the columns here is the osm normal highway tag so as we saw on the published examples there is a, a plethora of tags and it's quite quite confusing to see we've included them within the data pack um just um for 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 visualization purposes and, and, and um, being able to define uh, your own networks, which I'll talk about in, in just one minute. Um, and then again, the road descriptions right next to it. So you can see how it's, it's, it's cleaning up uh, the plethora of data quite a lot. As mentioned, there are two additional columns I would like to add to this for another function known as um, active travel. Uh, there's going to be active travel walk and active travel cycle. Now, active travel walk and active travel cycle will have. Uh, pardon me, one just second. There we go. Pardon me. Um, <clears throat> what was I? Yes, OI active travel and OI uh, active active walk and active cycle, whereby the column values for each walking or cycling are yes or no, based on whether that feature is part of a walk it, walking or cyclable network as defined by the um, OSM extract package. Um, now I'll just get a quick demonstration of this here. Okay, unfortunately, I, I don't have a, a good demonstration of this um, ready right now. Um, but say, for example, here, this is an incredibly crude and very high level overview. Here we have um, the total network plot for um, West Yorkshire. This high density area here is actually the city of Leeds. Uh, and I believe we come over to more Pudsey here. Um, anyway, this is the total network here. And by here, uh, this is using a different package. Um, this, is, this, is, this is an example using the Pyrosm package. However, the, the, the principle is still the same for the OSM extracts package in R, is that we can specify a network type here it's driving. Um, there's walking and cycling options specifiable as well. And what happened? What's happened here is it's just removed any features in this instance that aren't applicable for driving on. So we've still got the main uh, main roads, primary roads, motorways going around here, and a lot of density within the city areas where there are a lot of um, drivable roads, um, be it made the main roads or linkage roads, etc. But yeah, the principle here is that it's removed features which aren't appropriate for driving. Um, likewise, these two additional columns, um, OI walking and OI cycling, will simply have yes if the feature's um, appropriate for cycling and no if it's not. Um, the idea being here that people can get um, 
you can get a brief overview of sort of how how cycle friendly or walking friendly your local area might be. Um, <coughs> pardon me. And then um, based on there, identify areas that may need improving or are already quite good, um, etc. Now, um, that's all uh, the main things I want to talk about at the moment with regards to our transport data packs. Um, there are a number of additional things we are um, considering uh, addition, uh, considering adding to these data packs. Um, <coughs> say, for example, uh, road width, which is quite a useful um, feature when trying to consider um, setting up contraflow cycle lanes on old one way roads uh, and just in general, uh, it's good to know. Uh, road width, the presence of lighting or not, um, such stuff is really useful for active travel at night. Um, so that's something we're looking to get included as well. <coughs> it's uh, It seems in OSM that should be something that we could get added quite quickly. Um, there's a, a, there's a, there is a, a tag that's ma mapping the presence of light or not in there. Uh, the the exact level of luminance um, is not something we can we can obtain from OFM, OSM. Uh, and then finally, also um, estimated or expected traffic volume uh, per road. This is something we've just thought would be really cool and really useful information to have. Um, we're still looking at or still really thinking about how to implement implement this. Um, I'd also just wanted to take this time finally to point out the uh, open infra repo. Uh, it's available at GitHub with UDS leads and then open infra. On here we have um, the issues uh, threads where we are talking about the current example data pack and additional functions and functionalities or, or data we'd like to be included within this data pack. Um, he can, if you if you're interested, you can sort of see our thoughts and our reasonings behind it. But also, I'd just like to encourage if anybody has any thoughts or ideas or things they would like to be like to see in these data packs uh, to come on here and engage with some uh, discussion and, and thoughts on us about that. Um, so I think I think I should have hopefully covered a lot of not everything of of the progress update so far. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Great stuff, James. Yeah, thanks for that. A very informative overview. And um, I'll finish the recording here because that was just a, a really nice self-contained um, overview and status update on the project, which, yeah, it looks like it's going really well. And I'm sure others will be interested in that. So um, we will be sharing this, this video link. Um, so I'm just going to stop recording.